Shalom, Father Robert Lauder, Professor of Philosophy at St. John's University, a priest of the Diocese of Brooklyn. In this continuing Catholic novel series, today we are going to deal with Ron Hansen's novel, Mariette in Ecstasy. And let me tell you, this is a terrific novel. Uh, it's set in uh, 1906. A young 17-year-old girl enters a very strict religious order. It's called the Sisters of the Crucifixion, and that's almost a hint of what this book is going to be about. Uh, her 27-year-old her sister is the superior of the order. Uh, there are lots of references to uh, nuns being brides of Christ. Matter of fact, they, they, the uh, invitation to her taking her vows says Mariette is about to become a bride of Christ. So uh, there are many, many levels to this novel. Let me just give you the plot a little bit. Uh, she's in the uh, convent for a couple of months, and her sister, who is the superior mother, Celine, dies of cancer. Shortly after that, it seems that Mariette has got the stigmata. She, uh, she's bleeding from the hand, she's bleeding from the feet, and she's bleeding from her side. Now, I'm not kidding. When you, when you are on page 20 or 25, this is what happened to me the first time I read the book. Oh, she, the, the, the stigmata is authentic. She really is having it. Then 10 or 15 pages later, oh, no, she isn't. She's fooling everybody. She's tricking everybody. And then about 10 or 15 pages later, no, she's sick. She's really psychotic, okay? And now I'm not kidding. This, this goes all the way through the book. It's, like, it's really like a theological, theological mystery story. And it's not solved until the last page of the book. And I'm not going to tell you what the solution is. But uh, the, the, the book grabs you completely. Uh, I, I loaned the book to a, a nun friend of mine who taught literature for years. She knows much more about literature than I do. And she... Uh, uh, she loved it, and she said later, just in passing, she gave her opinion about whether Mariette was a faker, sick, or authentic. And I said, oh, wait a minute. No, no, you've got that wrong. Uh, I said, read the last page again. And then she called me up and said, y you're right. M my interpretation was wrong, and yours was right. So that's how good this is, and that's how tight this is. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the way that Hansen constructs it, and I think it's brilliant, there's an investigation going on, trying to find out, you know, is this young lady really having the stigmata? And so he inserts part of the interrogation throughout the novel. The, the convent is completely divided. There are some nuns who think that Mariette is a saint, and there are other nuns who think she's just put it, trying to put a, a trick over on us. Uh, after Mother Celine dies, the, the sister who takes over, who, who succeeds her as uh, the mother superior, does not like Mariette. They're in conflict right away. And uh, there's something, uh, a suggestion we have some jealousy. It reminded me a little bit of the song of Bernadette. Remember, the uh, superior didn't like Bernadette almost because why was Bernadette having these visions of the Blessed Mother and she wasn't? Well, there's just a little bit of that. However, as the, no as the novel develops, the Mother Superior comes to believe that Mariette's uh, stigmata are authentic. However, the convent is in complete disarray. On, at Sunday Mass, hundreds and hundreds of people are coming to church because they want to see Mariette, uh, and the convent can't function. So the Mother Superior, even though she believes that Mar Mariette's uh, wounds are authentic, has to uh, send Mariette out of the convent because the, con the convent just cannot, uh, cannot uh, do all its duties and make it a contemplative atmosphere and help the, nun uh, the nuns be reflective. Uh, there's also a, a, some special relationship between Mariette and her father, who is a doctor. Mariette is not only very beautiful, she is also brilliant. And the doctor had always hoped that his daughter would become a doctor. So while well, he says they, they used to communicate beautifully before she entered the convent, when he comes to see her now, you know, after he asks her how she's doing, she says, it's wonderful, it's perfect, that's all she says. And he says to uh, he mentions, you know, we, we used to be able to talk for hours together. What, what's going on? What's happening? So the fact that she's a doctor also complicates the plot. He's asked to examine the wounds that she has. Are they authentic or aren't they authentic? Now, there's one, uh, there are two pages in this book that I think are so terrifically written. Um, the priest who is the chaplain and who is doing, engaging in the investigation is hearing the confessions of the nuns. And one nun comes in and starts to talk, and he cannot recognize her voice. He says, now, which, which sister is that? And then the voice changes. 
And it, each thing the nun sa says, the voice changes. And P uh, Père Marriott, that's his name, is completely confused. And then the nun starts saying, uh, you know, it's, it's all a fake. It started out as a joke, but now she's trying to, she, she really wants to trick everyone. And uh, he says to her, you, you, you mean it's all, it's all uh, just all made up? And then the voice turns very sultry and almost sexy. And the nun says to him, you're always thinking about her, aren't you? She's in your dreams. And when the nun finishes and leaves the confessional, the priest gets up and opens the curtain, and there's, no nun, there's nobody there. He, 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 he d does not know who is going to confession, and I hope you can guess who it is. It's Satan. You know, Satan has taken on the, the uh, appearance of the, of the nun and, and went into confession and so on. Now, here's what I think is great writing, that somebody in the uh, 20th century can write a novel in which Satan appears as a character and make it work, I think is terrific. Uh, Walker Percy did this also in Love in the Runes, and Franny O'Connor did it in The Violent Buried Away, but it takes, a special, it takes a special gift. Now I tell you, when I first read that, those two pages, <laughs> chills went up and down my spine. Uh, I mean, you really get a sense of evil, okay? Well anyway, the, uh, the Mother Superior asks uh, Marriott, tells Marriott she has to leave, and then we get a, a kind of an epilogue. It's many years later, at least uh, 20 years later, and Mariette is writing back to one of the nuns who has written to her. And uh, Mariette's, uh, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna go to any detail here because the, uh, the last two pages, I think, solve the mystery. You discover whether she's faking, whether she's crazy, or whether they're authentic. Now, there are many sexual symbols in it. Uh, I'm going to use the, the, the uh, Old Testament book, the Canticle of Canticles, sometimes called the Song of Songs. I've heard three interpretations of it, and this will introduce us to this notion, why do mystics uh, use sexual imagery? Uh, in the Canticle of Canticles, or the Song of Songs, uh, um, a, a woman has been unfaithful to her husband, and he's pursuing her. Now, one interpretation of the uh, book is, that that's, that's the story, a man is pursuing his wife who has become promiscuous. The second interpretation is that the woman represents Israel, who have, who, the, the, the Israelites who have been unfaithful to God, and the husband represents the God, the hound of heaven, pursuing his people who have turned to idols. And then the third commentary I heard on it is, the author is probably a mystic, and he's using sexual symbols uh, to indicate the relationship that he has with God. So there are, there are detailed descriptions of his wife's body, which I, if you have never read the book, you might be stunned when you read it. You say, my gosh, this is in the Bible, okay? Uh, and that's fairly common among mystics. So what are they doing? Are they saying literally that uh, uh, a relationship with God is literally like a sexual relationship? No, here's what I think they're saying. A mystical experience really cannot be explained. Not only can it not be explained, it really can't even be articulated. So I think mystics use sexual symbols because they're saying a, a sexual love, sexual experience is something like a mystical experience. Um, you know, I mean, God doesn't have a body. God does not hug people or kiss people. But the mystic, it's, it's an experience that's beyond ideas. And so, so they do their best. So uh, if, when, if you read the book, and I hope you do, uh, I don't want you to be shocked or scandalized, okay, because Mariette refers to uh, this, this intimate relationship that she has with God, uh, or at least that she's telling the nun she has with God uh, in terms of sexual terms. Uh, if, you, if you read Mariette in Ecstasy and you really like it, you might want to try another novel, another Catholic novel by Hansen, who I think is a terrific writer, really an excellent writer. It's called Atticus, and it's kind of a retelling of the uh, par uh, story of the parable son, the, excuse me, the parable of the, uh, of the prodigal son, and it's quite good. Uh, uh, it may not be as good as Marriott, but that's because Marriott may be a mini masterpiece, really tops. Uh, I don't know how many people would be interested in seeing a film based on this book, but I think it could be really good. Uh, it would, it would uh, I think, cause people to think, you know, wh wh what, it, what is my faith? Uh, how, how do I, is, my, is my love of God just emotion? Is my love of God something like romantic love? Is God's love for me something like romantic love? So I think the book raises a number of questions. 
Uh, when I use it at St. John's University in a course, uh, it immediately grabs the uh, student's attention. Uh, I think if you told someone the plot, they'd say, well, you know, I, I don't know whether contemporary college students are going to be terribly interested in that. Take my word for it. It grabs them right away. Now, one other point I want to make, there are many uh, detailed descriptions of the beauties of nature. Now, why does, why does uh, Ron Hansen do that? He does that because, uh, you know, the great insight that Gerard Manny Hopkins has in one of his poems, the world is charged with the grandeur of God. So Hansen, I think, is underlining that the God who made these, these beautiful scenes of nature, the God who turns uh, autumn into winter and winter into spring and spring into summer, is in love with us, totally in love with us. You know, that we, we don't have to win that love, we don't have to earn that love, we don't have to merit that love, it's all gift. Um, the uh, division in the, in the, in the convent, is, uh, I don't want to caricature it, but in general, some of the older nuns seem to be disturbed by, by Mariette and uh, think she's, you know, just putting something over on them. And some of the younger nuns are just overwhelmed by her. They, they find her, they think she's a saint. Uh, at one point, one of the nuns says, you know, since you've got here, you have been a channel of grace to me. So I, I can't praise this novel enough. I think it's really good. I hope you, I hope you take a look at it. <laughs>